It is 5.33 a.m. Thursday, April 1st here in Japan, and I just wrote this microbiology question because this has prevalence, significance on the NBME exams for step one. I'd reckon the chance is 20 to 33%-ish that you would get a similar question on your USMLE. Same concept, okay? So we're just going to slightly increase the chance of you augmenting your score one or two points because you decided to watch this YouTube clip that got maybe eight views if I'm lucky. So we have this 32 year old chick. She's got uh, a clearly a UTI. E. coli most likely cause an organism. Obviously there can be exceptions where it's not E. coli, but we're not gonna digress down that direction at the moment. Culturing shows resistance to ampicillin, sensitivity to ceftriaxone, and we're merely asked why this is the case. What's the mechanism? Now, when we think of ampicillin resistance, Ampicillin, amoxicillin, penicillin are classic beta-lactams that bear sensitivity to beta-lactamases, penicillinases, okay? That's something we think about initially. And then we see that there's uh, sensitivity to ceftriaxone. Ceftriaxone is, re is resistant to beta-lactamases. So this is not complicated. The organism is producing a penicillinase or a beta-lactamase. And we look at the answer choices here, Correct answer is D, production of cleavage enzyme. Okay, it's like, ooh, wow, like it's worded slightly differently, but like that, I mean, that's it. Methylation of beta lactam ring, wrong fucking answer. It's not what the USMLE wants. I just made that up. I'm going to give you some other high yield value here, apart from just uh, giving you that quick answer. USMLE wants you to know that the other time beta lactamase production will be the answer is when we're dealing with resistance of staph aureus, not MRSA, okay? It's community staph, MSSA, methicillin sensitive staph aureus. When we're dealing with uh, resistance of community staph, MSSA, to ampicillin, amoxicillin, penicillin, 90% plus of community staph produces beta-lactamase, which is why if you have EG cellulitis, non-bolus or bolus impetigo, you can't give amoxicillin, ampicillin, or penicillin. They're wrong fucking answers, okay? They're not going to work against staph over 90% of the time. So erysipelas, group A strep, strepagenes, eclipses staph aureus. In rare circumstances, penicillin's not a, not a wrong selection as per the literature, but on USMLE, it's the wrong fucking answer, okay? So the point is you never give amoxicillin, penicillin, or ampicillin for skin. Because if it's staph aureus, MSSA, there's likely resistance to it because the organism produces a beta-lactamase. So USMLE likes you to know the resistance mechanism when you go from MSSA to MRSA. This is where students get fucked up. Now, if you know the point already that MSSA produces beta-lactamase, it already makes beta-lactamase. So if it's becoming MRSA, you know that the production of beta-lactamase can't be the answer. It's already doing that. So the answer is altered penicillin binding protein or production of novel penicillin binding protein. Sometimes you'll see PBB2, doesn't matter. Now in, this, in, this, uh, in, in the answer choices I wrote here, I have synthesis of novel penicillin binding protein. That would be the answer if the question said, why is staph, why do we have MRSA? Okay, how did it become resistant to uh, methicillin? Okay, and it's the production of a novel penicillin binding protein. So most of the time, staph aureus is going to be already sensitive to methicillin class antibiotics. So methicillin, dicloxacillin, flucloxacillin, et cetera, nafcillin, oxacillin. And it's because the methicillin class of beta lactams are beta-lactamase resistant. Okay, so you can use those against community staph. You can't use penicillin, amoxicillin, or ampicillin. They're sensitive to beta-lactamase, but you can use methicillin class beta-lactams because they're heavily steric, they're resistant to beta-lactamase. They will work against MSSA. So if someone has a skin infection, cellulitis, non-bolus, or bolus impetigo, or erysipelas, as we mentioned before, you can give dicloxacillin oral flucloxacillin IV, a lot we can talk about, okay? But I'm just reiterating this because this is good medicine for you to know. So the concise 
short recapitulation here for USMLE is that if you get a question where they ask about why you have resistance to ampicillin, amoxicillin, or penicillin, but you have sensitivity to a third generation cephalosporin, such as ceftriaxone, or even a fourth generation cephalosporin, like cefepime, uh, the answer is production of beta-lactamase, okay? A lot we can talk about. Uh, it just depends on how much I want to go off on different tangents. Uh, but I'd say one final point is I've also seen in NBME questions where they'll say, why is mycoplasma? Why can you not use amoxicillin against that? And it's because mycoplasma, not mycobacterium, mycoplasma does not have peptidoglycan in its cell wall, okay? So beta-lactams rely on disrupting the cross-linking of the peptidoglycan cell wall, okay, by interacting with penicillin binding proteins. So you can't use beta-lactams to treat mycoplasma. We use classically macrolides like azithromycin, okay, or sometimes tetracyclines like doxy to treat mycoplasma. As I said, a lot we can fucking talk about, right? Why do we make this a 47-minute meandering clip? So I'm obviously going to make more content. If you liked this, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.